So I like throwing things together in an unexpected ways. The throwing together of Māori and European cultures has inspired artists for more than a century. I've been playing with animating William Morris prints and it was more about just um, seeing how two different, uh, quite different cultures and design cultures combined. When Wanganui Art School graduate Cecilia Kumiroa organised a group of Māori contemporary artists to do a show at their old school, she encouraged them to add their own input. But she'd already chosen a theme. And I said, well, actually, you're all doing the same. we're all doing the same thing. It is Kai Takitanga, so others wanted to jump on the yacht. Let's do Captain Cook, um, a protest against it. And I was like, well, actually, you, it's, you're still talking about Kai Takitanga. So you're still talking about um, uh, some things that have been seen as threats to our Kai Takitanga guardianship. And then as we're seeing in the news, it's very timely. It's all sort of, everyone's sort of talking about the same thing in our own way. So. Um, all of the work here um, is a response to um, Kai Tanga. In 1995, a peaceful protest known as the occupation of Motua Gardens happened just across the road from the art school. Oh, we've still got a lot of work to do, but I think there's been great progress in Wanganui, you know, since the Pākei Tōri occupation. You know, I was at art school, we were all at art school. The protests dominated the headlines and divided the nation, but it set the stage for positive change in the town. Really it's about us maintaining our Whanganui tanga, so our mana whenua. So um, we're the tangata whenua of this, of this area, of this land, and so that becomes a symbol for us and that is like our you know, standing point where we go to and we quite often use it. The other day we went there and we um, stood in solidarity with Ihu Mātau, the people at Ihu Mātau. This old pa with its mix of war monuments still remains as it was in 1995, with the exception of New Zealand's Premier John Balance's head. Removed during the occupation, the remaining plinth, like a contemporary artwork, a reminder of Whanganui's history. So we're still going through our crown processes, um, not perfect, and it never will be, you know, in terms of, you know, as treaty partners, the crown has not met its obligations. It's always in breach. <laughs> it's always in breach. In my work in particular, with the Governor Gray um, attacking a PO, um, there's lots of issues in that that we still have to resolve. So he, of course, came to Wanganui and set up the Rutland Stockade and stuff like that. So, and that eventuated in the uh, Battle of St John's Wood. Um, and then after that, the year later, there was um, the Whanganui land purchase. While there's been lots of positive change in the past two decades, artist Sasha Keating says there's much more work still to be done. I work here in an education institute and I see a lot of displaced young Māori, Pacific Island and European who don't have a a, a solid foundation in their, in their heritage. So they thirst for that knowledge as well as academia. So um, this piece is really just a representation of that journey that I see on a day-to-day -day basis. And I also live myself, you know, so. Um, I did read a piece the other day actually from the ex-Prime Minister Jim Bolger and, um, and he made comment about um, the obligation to the treaty and um, the fact that there was skullduggery in this initial document and the reason why the document was constructed, um, which I thought was interesting for a national government. You know, not my cup of tea, but I definitely agree with Mr Bolger on that one, for sure. Kumaroa and Keating are now focusing on their next show at the Edith Gallery in September. Georgie Ormond, Local Focus.